Yo, King Bullet jumping right into the comics soon. Today I'll be power scaling image comics Omni Man from Invincible, authored by Robert Kirkman. You know the guy who did The Walking Dead? Yeah, so expect a lot of gore and action. Now, Omni Man isn't the protagonist of the series, but in my opinion, he's the most interesting and the most popular character in the entire series. So, how fast and strong is he? Well, before we get into that, I'll give you a quick introduction. Nolan Grayson is an alien called a Viltrumite from the planet Viltrum. He's also the defender of the planet Earth and helps the Guardians of the Globe protect the planet. The Guardians of the Globe are basically Basically, this cheap ripoff of a Justice League. In a big twist of events, he isn't who he says he is. One day, he simultaneously defeats and kills the Guardians of the Globe in a gruesome event. It should be noted, he seems to be capable of taking all of the Guardians of the Globe out with one to several shots in the comics. However, it's slightly different in the animated series, where he seems to be struggling more so. So I would assume that they're barely relative to him in power. And that does make sense, because when he's restrained by characters, it seems like he's actually trying when breaking out this restraint. Even characters like the Red Rush seem to be fast enough to keep up with Omni-Man, and Red Rush punches him so fast that he actually gives him friction burns. This is pretty impressive since Omni Man never gets friction burns when he's traveling at top speed. The immortal Abe Lincoln is also capable of swapping hands with him until Omni Man obviously decapitates him. All of this happens really early into the story and it's one of my favorite fight scenes, if I'm being honest. Now, at this point, his son has recently become a superhero. Eventually, Nolan, Omni Man, has to reveal to his son Mark, aka Invincible, the protagonist, that he's murdered the Guardians of the Globe. He reveals to Mark the secret of his species' success and his purpose on Earth, which was to conquer it in exchange for their natural resources, and if they didn't oblige, then it would have their resources taken away from them forcibly. Mark isn't able to accept any of this, so in a brutal fight, loses to his father, who then leaves this planet. I won't go into a lot more detail from here, so let's get into his abilities. Omni-Man has enhanced senses, so he can hear, see, smell, and even touch to a higher degree than a human. He has flight, he has a long lifespan, he can live up to like a thousand years plus. He can even regenerate, so when he's impaled, he should be able to regen at least that. I'm not sure about limbs. Also, obviously, spoiler alert, one of the reasons he dies is because he's impaled and his heart stops functioning and then he dies, so he's not immortal or anything. He also states that he can hold his breath for two weeks, so you know, he can go out into space and survive for two weeks. So not only does he not need oxygen for that long, but this also means he can survive the harsh vacuum of space, and you know, it's really cold out in space. He has telepathy. Now, it's explained it's like alien technology in his air that allows him to transmit and hear of his thoughts. He has resistance to absolute zero, and also has a resistance to high temperatures, even being capable of fighting on stars. I know that sounds insane, but apparently he can. Now there are actual upper limits, to what kind of temperatures they can withstand. So in this example, Thrag and Invincible are barely resisting the heat produced from the surface of this star. Now I will talk about this later because it's important. All Viltrumites also have reactive evolution, so their Viltrumite DNA repairs itself over time for different contexts and different environments, such as reproduction with other species or long-term survival. Now remember, the way Viltrumites evolved was through selective breeding, so that's the reason they have this ability, I suppose. Now moving into the first major category, speed. How fast is Omni-Man? Omni-Man was capable of throwing a baseball around the planet, so when he threw it, it arrived back to him in a few seconds. This would be a sub-relativistic to relativistic feat, meaning it's getting closer to the speed of light, but it's not quite there yet. Remember, this is a really casual, I'm training with my son kind of thing. Now we know after beating his son, he left the planet. He flew from Earth to another planet with life on it in a week or so, since we know he can hold his breath for about two weeks. Now this feat will be massively faster than the speed of light. I'm assuming he left the solar system. Also, we know he scales to Alan the Alien, who literally moves between galaxies to recruit people to fight Viltramites. And he does it in a really short amount of time. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's millions to billions of times faster than the speed of light. If you're wondering, hey Bullet, where are you getting these numbers from? It sounds arbitrary. Well, I've actually done calculations similar to this feat in the past. So, you know, it's a give or take estimation. I can link you down in the description feats similar to this, like feats from Utsutsuki in Naruto or feats from Superman etc. Within fiction, it's usually quite common for like cosmic beings to travel these intergalactic to stellar ranges in a relatively short amount of time. So genuinely, I'm not that surprised. Now, moving on, attack potency. So this is like the main part of the video. We know he's somewhat comparable to Thrag, the leader of a Viltramite race. First time they encountered each other, he was kind of getting beat. Moving on to the most destructive on-panel feat, Thaddeus, Omni-Man, and Invincible work together to destroy the planet Viltrum. According to the actual guidebook, it stated that planet Viltrum has a gravity 25% stronger than Earth's. So even lowballing and assuming that the planet is the same size as Earth, we could actually calculate this feat. And I will link this calculation down in the description. 
Anyway, the GBE or gravitational binding energy is planet level. Now to figure out the KE, we kind of need to take a look at the explosion afterward. And this all happens within a time frame of 5 seconds. You're probably wondering where the hell I got this time frame from. Well it literally happens within a single page. A page or two, I can't remember exactly. Which is incredibly quick. Roughly around Mach 9850. And the energy or kinetic energy produced from this attack or from this explosion would have to be at least large planet level. Now I would assume that Omni-Man is at least one third of his feet. However, even if you said he was like a few percentages of it, he would still be at least planet level. But I think it's fair to assume he's large planet level. Anyway, now Viltrum is destroyed. Thrag is definitely not happy with this, like at all. Omni-Man has to fight Thrag again. However, this time round, the fight between them was definitely more pitched. However, he was eventually killed by Thrag, unfortunately. He was literally impaled through the heart. It didn't kill him instantly. However, the attack did prove fatal. Now we're gonna move into the mid-end scaling. So we know Omni-Man scales to Mark near the end of his story somewhat. So Mark, aka Invincible, is actually capable of arm wrestling his father. We know he loses his arm wrestle because technically he was distracted by his literal rapist. However, it should be noted that they were relative to each other in this arm wrestle. And also, once Mark's lost, he asked his father if him being the leader of the Viltrumites requires him to be the strongest. And this is based off the arm wrestle. So Mark himself is technically conceding that his father may be stronger than him. And we know Mark around this time can actually fight characters like Spawn. In fact, he states that he's defeated and killed Spawn before. It should be noted this is a parallel universe Spawn, since this isn't the first Spawn that Mark has fought. To be as fair as possible, I'm gonna assume this Spawn is like base Spawn level. I don't know why it would be any lower. So how strong is Image Comic Spawn? You most likely have heard of him before, he's quite a powerful being. Spawn himself should be relative to Angela, who's an angel, so like his opposite. And Angela is relative to Kron. She was literally unharmed by the anti-life and the anti-life creation attacks from the Kron. The Kron's life program is digitalized, demonized, doom. Anti-power, anti-life. Supposedly a dying society hid the Kron in the proto-sun a billion years ago. The Kron killed that star and two others and their respective planetary systems. 400 billion lives were lost. It's literally a part of the Kron's narrative to destroy entire star systems. So it should at least be soul system level. Now Angela is actually one of the stronger angels. So she can literally take on hundreds of thousands of angels. And we know angels are actually capable of very quickly traveling the universe. So Omni-Man scales to these kind of characters like Invincible, Spawn, Angela. So this would place him around solar system level. However, what a lot of people like to bring up here is the fact that when he did destroy planet Viltrum, it was stated that him and the people he did it alongside would die. If they gave the planet enough time, the planet would stabilize and that they could die on impact. So therefore, they can't really be beyond large planet level. However, there could be money reasons for this. It should be noted that the planet's core stabilizing and them being caught up in it would probably expose them to a lot of radiation and a lot of heat. More heat than the temperature produced from the surface of the sun. So this is why I said earlier that there's limitations to Viltrumite's heat resistance so as long as this is the case there's no contradiction with them being solar system level so i think it's completely plausible for that to be the case now moving on to really contentious scaling here's a high-end scaling for omni-man so we know there's a character within the series or within image comics called omnipotence not much is actually known about his origin but we know he arrived to earth to drain energy since he had to restore his own energy that he'd previously lost he was met with the guardians of the globe and was fended off by them until the arrival of black samson whose powers had also been restored and actually surged for months of not using them samson charges into omnipotence and sends him back to his own dimension destroying the warp key meaning he can't actually get back to Earth either. Omnipotence would actually find a way back to Earth, and upon arrival, he's faced with the Guardians. Invincible and Dinosaurus also arrive to fight him. Dinosaurus actually bites Omnipotence's head off, and it explodes. We know Omni-Man should at least be around this kind of level. He should be around the level of Mark, Dinosaurus, and Black Samson. Now the question becomes, how strong is Omnipotence? He is somebody who has claimed waste to an entire solar system. The problem with his power is, it's kind of implied a lot of it is hacks based and done through chain reactions where his power exponentially grows once he's used an attack. Although the solar system level power should comfortably place him around that level, making the mid-end scaling a little bit more consistent. This is like a weakened Omnipotence. At full power, he's famed for actually obliterating his entire universe, the one he came from. He apparently has limitless power that can reshape the universe, and that's his goal. He's very consistently stated a cosmic to universal level threat. He's capable of using his raw power and will to bend the laws of physics. Throughout his lifetime, his goal is to destroy as many universes as possible. He's also capable of remaking the universe in his image. 
Of course, you can claim that he's weakened in his first appearance arriving on Earth. However, in his second appearance, when he returns back to Mark's universe, he states that this time he isn't drained and he's come prepared. So I'd assume he's probably near full power. Obviously, then Dinosaur is killing Omnipotus, which is massively impressive since Dinosaur isn't even like the strongest person in the verse or anything. Like literally in the same chapter, it's kind of like narratively implied Thrag is a bigger threat. So these higher tier characters may possibly be universe level. It should also be noted that Mark goes to like another alternate universe and fights Omnipotus where he shouldn't really be weakened. So all of this kind of does make sense. So in conclusion, in attack potency and even striking potency because his punches relate to how strong he is, should be large planet level, including his durability. He should be able to take his own counterforce. He should probably be soul system level, but he could be much higher, like universe level potentially. He's got a ton of abilities like I mentioned before, and in speed, he should be massively faster than the speed of light, easily between millions and billions of times faster than the speed of light, since, you know, he scales to characters who move between galaxies pretty casually. Now, hopefully all of this wraps up how strong Omni-Man is and how fast he is. If I had to compare him to other characters from other verses, it would be very difficult. I'd probably claim that the metas are similar to Naruto, so low bold, he's planet level, mid bold, he's like solar system level, and high bold, he's like universe level. It might be similar to that. So as a power scaler, I think I've given people the general power scaling. I gave you three different ways you could be able to scale him. So depending on your interpretation, you might think Omni-Man's X or Y. Or in this certain case, Z slash Z. It's really just up to you. So yeah, those are my final thoughts. If you like comic power scaling or power scaling in general, please like this video. Maybe you just like the whole Invincible series and you want to see me do more videos on this. If you do, subscribe, like the video. Let me know down in the comment section. Maybe I missed feats or something. You can let me know about that. Regardless, thank you for watching. Peace out.